Hello out there. It's Monday night, and this is White Ash Flies with Colin Mahoney. I hope your week's off to a good start. And thanks for tuning in. For this, the latest installment of Xander's Appendix and other gratuitous organs, with three poems written and read by Colin Mahoney. The first of which came together years ago in Chicago, around this time of year which, though technically spring, in Chicago is still very much winter. The sun doesn't warm you, and the wind still comes in cold off the lake, and you're still in five layers. It's a time of year that always put me in a fatalistic mood, which is the mood of the first poem today, and perhaps all three. You can find this and other episodes of White Ash Flies on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Anchor FM, Acast, and you can also follow us on Twitter at Colin Mahoney15. And now three poems written and read by Colin Mahoney on White Ash Flies. Living Room with TV. Surely many desolate, Large and transplendent houses are washed out whistling, or dragged up by cart ropes and prison horses, past your new rooms, your appointed easts rising terrifically, house to house, field to field. Blue fiery engines pointed at airplanes and oaks, the former tracked across a triptych of blue windows with branches. The latter, now a fringe of smoke to come home to. Our families pent miserably under the tiles, where our kids suffer neural growth, appetite, conversation, and are raised to prefer April to March, when women and other plants live in slender, bending stems. Men, too, sitting like cold roots in the ground, and made honest at last by liquor brought in from elsewhere. The roads are evil here, and we all go crookedly like prison horses. The rents are evil here, and the buildings are low lamentations of brick, scrubbed in basic sunlight, and shadows flock and unfold. But in the television, the whale emporium, where we enjoy a plenty of glass and linens and torsos tilted just so to appeal to every wash of us, under the tagline, Earth is a Memory. My dentist lives in the suburbs, attends meetings in the city. As I reclined under the filament, staring back under all that scratching light, Anyway, he said, washing his hands, we can't always suffer heaven. So heaven visits a plague of white ash flies on my little suburb, in my eyes and hair. It keeps the girls out of the preserve, and then the pleasure's out of it, if, like me, you enjoy jogging past the girls in the preserve, or taking in their soccer from afar in the full light and confidence that your car and belongings still wait for you somewhere. First, my kid breaks her clavicle in practice. Then more petty reversals, amounting to a gray weight of cloud, edges burning. And my wife keeps buying self-sealing bowls, so the leftovers keep dismally, progenerate coldly. Spongy Slack, divine. Dissolved into all the girls come over in fluorescence to watch the kids, to suck ice cubes or crack them between bicuspids, which sounds like clavicles ground into paths of new gravel, into white ash flies in your eyes and hair. We measure plagues by men, women, children, Wrecked where they joined, or resolved to sift apart insensibly, under a sudden gray weight. 
which broke, showed ore of the best teeth among us, to be leveled and caviled at and after. What's a girl's hair, when all our alloy fillings go to seed, to break untold, unmoved eras of trees? One man to another, somewhere over South Dakota. Let me bring you up to speed. Six hundred miles an hour over White Owl, South Dakota. Over Imogene. The expanse around her still winter, with circles sunk or breathing up from below. I sat at my portal, thinking about my mentholated soap, and whole stadiums filled in with earth, when from the middle seat behind me, What's your name? Aaron. And what's your name? Karen. Ah, so I've got an Aaron and a Karen. Assenting laughter on both hands. This after a wholehearted, Full-throated address on service animals generally, and hers specifically, her spaniel, Bella, the apple of her eye, who breathes in her lap, presumably. Karen, would you like me to send you a picture of Bella? Sure. So, Aaron, what are you making? Socks. Just the toes. Socks. How about that? Black thread, red needle. It's been a challenge. And the middle one starts in on her crisis, about her husband's suicide, about a pleasing dream, Lord, keep us there, that her husband discovered her, unbalanced up there on the ledge. Lord, hold us there. And I thought, Now's the time, and from an adequate height. Lord, I've learned the hard way how an hour into every flight zero humidity hits. The air went plush, exhalation of cherry blossoms, her hand lotion, presumably, like silk scarves twisting and tightening, as lawns unrolled and cul-de-sacs bloomed below where mankind, presumably, arranged itself around bulldozed ponds, radially. Where was I? Some thirty thousand feet above a valley between this rocky ledge and the other. And I said to my companion, a perfect stranger, I said, The center can't hold a straw in this atmosphere. Nobody'll deplane unexcavated unless we can unbelt ourselves sooner and crack this egg open. We'll seed the clouds with senseless men, water the earth with whatever we are, 